Hello and welcome to Trivia Tuesday. Trivia Tuesday, let me bore you to sleep. My name is Jason Newland and today is Tuesday the 29th of October 2024. It is 7.45 p.m. And hope you're well. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Viddy has... Viddy uh, just had a little bit of excitement when the neighbours came round. And she's got a little girl, and the little girl loves Finny. He's, yeah, he's always just loved her. So he was super excited right now. Well, not right now, about an hour ago. And also, he saw one of the other neighbours downstairs who he's got a real thing for. I mean, I haven't seen his his tail waggle so much in ages. He's so excited to see her as well. So he's, I think he'd say he's had a pretty good, quite exciting day, really. <laughs> I just, he seemed to be having fun. Uh, took him to the, took it to up your boy. I wasn't yawning before I started. I just, just, I see a microphone that makes me yawn. So yeah, um, blah. it's cold in there. Feels cold. It'll probably be warm in a minute, the heating will come on. It's kind of that time of the year where, I mean, normally, at the end of October, it's normally pretty chilly, but I was out about an hour ago walking the uh, DOG, and it was very mild outside. We're starting to rain a little bit, but it's very... Very mild. And it's a bit too warm in here. But now... Hmm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm going to do my jacket up. My jacket, my jumper, my cardigan. So I did some washing today, so that's good. Tried to clean the toilet. You get it. We got a line scale issue here, so I mean that's not the only reason the, to- <laughs> the toilet has been condemned, but it's it's definitely you know the line scale builds up because if if the water was higher like the whole time, the toilet would be clean, but only comes up to like the bottom bit of the toilet. Which means the rest of it. I don't know. Anyway, let's not talk about toilets, a. Eh? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about how I've done nothing towards my course, my psychology course. <laughs> Didn't do anything yesterday. A bit sniffy. I wasn't a minute ago. It's weird. That's another thing that seems to happen this time of year. You know, like earlier on, I sneezed a couple of times and then was fine. And I thought, oh, maybe it's hay fever, but possibly not in October. Yeah. Plus, I don't get it in the summer either, so I guess I wouldn't start getting it now. So, what's there to look forward to? Uh, I've got the dentist tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So, dentist. Uh, and then, there's not really anything happening this week. I'm looking forward to the election in the US of A. I'll be watching that live on Tuesday. That'll be overnight, though, so it'll be 10 p.m. onwards. I'll either watch it or I might listen to it on the radio and fall asleep. 
I'm just interested really it's just uh, so that's Tuesday and then Wednesday blimey the news is going to be very busy of course for obvious reasons because whatever the outcome is it's going to be a very unusual situation so yeah I think if I had anyone out there any relatives out there or whatever I'd make sure they got back before the election got home safely because I don't see it oh bloody it's weird I, I see Facebook and it's almost like this is a religion it's, it's all it's really kind of the fanaticism from both sides not from everyone but I just see some of the fanaticism and it's just like wow we don't really have that here not with a general election it's not we just don't have it I mean I'm just, there are fanatics obviously but it doesn't seem maybe there's just more money you know if you bombard people on the television constantly talking about politics and that you know and if you can afford to put adverts and you spend I mean what was his name uh, the richest man in the world he's back in one of the candidates isn't he and he's given us a, like the is it 300 million a month or something or 330 million a month something like that yeah, that's a lot of advertising space so yeah we don't don't really have that we have the a couple of adverts and if one has an advert everyone all the all the ones have to have an advert so the bbc or the itv or whatever they have to kind of be fair about who who they kind of show their political party political broadcast from uh, and also if they mention a constituent a constituency and a politician trying to become a member of parliament for let's say Norwich and they're talking about a, a conservative they then have to mention and this is a, a TV I think this is a regulatory thing I don't know if it's on TV but on radio they have to mention every other candidate from all the other all the other parties that are also going for that seat in Norwich it's weird so yeah um, it's going to be fascinating I mean the closest I think we've had in this country would be during Brexit and that was, I mean, yeah, a lot of division during that. But, like, practically nothing compared to what's been happening and what's going to happen. So, I just wish you all safe, whichever side you're on. I don't, I, well, I can't take sides. I'm not American, am I? I've got no, I've got no um, ore in this race, race, boat in this race horse in this race whatever the term is crocodile in this race you know this is the election results is it's really this is just as important as who speak of the election result of China or Australia or Denmark or you know it's just just another country but obviously not for those that live there it's, it's a lot bigger isn't it it's weird though because in is it, is it India or is it Pakistan that they took like a whole week or a week to actually elect to get the election results in because it's such so many people and China do they have elections I don't think they do they I don't know if they do or not I generally don't know I'm um, not sure if so I don't know if the public vote or it's the politicians that vote 
I do it new. Anyway, I wish everyone well. <laughs> that's that's it really. I'm not I'm not really that politically curious. So I've got I'm gonna do some trivia because it's trivia Tuesday and I've chosen to talk about ancient hygiene practices so this will be the strange and invent and inventive ways people in history stayed clean or at least thought they did so I've searched uh, so I've searched online so I'm going to continue to search but in the meantime I'll start Now, some of this might be false, okay? I'm going to get myself comfortable. Some of it not, might not be true. So, you know, I've tried to fact check, but it might be absolute horseradish. But it doesn't matter. It's, it's not that serious, I don't think so. So, number one is ancient Egyptians were early adopters of hygiene and used soap-like substances made from animal fats and plant oils. So I know a little bit about soap, okay. During, there was a little period four years ago where we were getting adverts on the, <laughs> I just can't, still can't believe it. We were getting adverts on the TV telling people showing people how to wash their hands now I learned to wash my hands quite an early age you know I mean I was what was I 50 I was 49 at this point well not when I learned to wash my hands but I'd learned to wash my hands um, a few times I mean I learned when I was a kid I'm not saying I did it, but I learned how to. You know, it's just like brushing my teeth. I knew how to do it, but if I could get away with just wetting the toothbrush and putting it back in the holder, I would do that. Like probably millions of other children have done that in the past. It's quite weird. I still do it. <laughs> I live on my own. <laughs> I still do it. Sometimes. So. I'll see whether or not. What I know already comes up. But washing my hands. I learned probably the second time. Probably when I was in the sea cadets. Because they did a bit of hygiene. They did first aid. They did health and safety. Firefighting, fire controls, you know, stuff how to use a fire extinguisher, uh, how to start a fire, which is ironic, really. It's like which, whichever way you go, you know, if you want to, <laughs> whichever the side of the fence you want to live on, you can, if you, if you, if you want to start a fire, or if you want to put one out. And so that was with the old stick and stuff. Um, I tell you something. I've, I've done. I did fire safety. I've done fire safety and health and safety. No, fire safety and uh, first aid. Three different times in my life. Once was when I was in the Sea Cadets. I mean, that was like, it wasn't just once, that was like continuous really for about two years. Don't remember much of it. The second time was when I was at college doing my catering course after I left school. I was doing it one day a week whilst I was at the <laughs> working at the chip shop. So, that was on a Wednesday, I do believe. And so I learned, you have to learn it. 
if part of catering so you have to learn how to especially because you're in a kitchen and stuff how to put out a fire how to um f just basic first aid and then there's when i was a counselor working in a charity and this was 2011 so there's a lot quite a big gap between 1986 and 2011 was that 86 yeah 20 26 years or whatever 25 years 26 years 25 years I yeah I remember that it was two different occasions one evening was the, the first aid and another time it was during the day which was the fire thing and I remember learning the two things I remember about the fire fire uh, safety was first of all I don't you have to learn which is which as far as the the fire extinguishers are so the the red ones being water and then you've got the cream and the other ones so I can't remember which is which. One's got powder and one's got foam. And one's got water. And you don't use water on an electric fire. Uh, you use well, ideally powder, I think, or foam or something. I don't know. The other thing I remember here, I think it was the... It might be the foam one or the powder one, but you don't touch the outside of it because it can freeze your hand once it's released it, it gets freezing cold so it can freeze your hand so you have to be careful of that um, otherwise you have to walk around for the rest of your life with a fire extinguisher stuck to your hand which could be a bit awkward especially if it's on your honeymoon I, I don't know that was just I don't know why I'm going there um, so the other thing I remember is you had to, if there's a fire, let's say um, it's just a, a bunch of rubbish is on fire in an alleyway. So you don't spray the water or the, the fire extinguisher directly at the fire. You try and bounce it off of something. For example... <laughs> Um, a wall so if there's a wall if you hear him bark I hope that wasn't too loud so if there's a wall you, you get it to splash off the wall and bounce otherwise if you do it directly it can spread the fire further out so yeah that's about all I remember really why am I talking about that for oh yeah but you also learnt like basic health and hygiene at the first two places like college and also I oh, one of the other things that I, I learned which is weird because I actually did the exact same thing after I learnt it and I learnt the hard way is they said whatever you're doing you know as far as because you know, there's lots of dangerous objects in a kitchen so first of all you don't run in a kitchen I mean, I was 15 and my, or 16. My attitude was, yeah, it's like being a school. Don't run in the hallway. Do what I want. No, you end up falling over because there's grease and all kinds of crap on the on the floor. Um, but one of the really important things is if you drop a knife, you know, for example, you're washing up washing up the the knives cleaning the knives you drop it don't ever try and catch it or if you drop it and it's about to go on the floor don't try and catch it never unless of course there's something below you know that's that you don't want it to obviously you know if in a in a weird situation you might have to, no choice but to catch it but if you've got no feet on no shoes on your feet rather don't be barefooted if you're cutting onions is what I'm saying and 
a fibber to the salami or whatever. And I thought, well, why would I go to catch a knife? And then I think it was either that day or the next time. It was exactly what I did. And, uh, oh man. it Because <clears throat> the knives are proper sharp in a kitchen. Like in a professional kitchen. And because it was college, the knives were always sharp. Really sharp. And, yeah. I learned the hard way. So... I would never... It, it goes against instincts, though. Because if you drop something, it's instinctive to try and catch it. Even though logically, it's like, well, it's a knife. Why the hell would I try and catch something that's sharp like that? Instincts. It's kind of almost natural to try and catch something that's falling. So you have to kind of let go of that natural instinct. Which I did. After cutting my hand open, I managed to do that. <laughs> I learned it. I learned it myself. So, what's the next one? Number two. Okay, they are also practical. Oh, Egyptians! They also practiced oral hygiene. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to talk about condoms. <clears throat> they also practice oral hygiene using powders from powdered ox hooves and eggshells. Now, there was a time. This is what I know. I know a little bit about um, this country, at least that where I live. Is they thought. If you're able to mask the smell, it meant you were clean. So if you could find something that was smelled nice to cover up the horrible smell, and you use that and you put that into your skin, then you're actually clean. And I mean, there are people that probably still think that. Uh, that's what deodorant's for sometimes, isn't it? You know, if you can't bother to have a bath and you've got to go out, use half a, t half a tin of deodorant and it usually does a trick. So oral hygiene. Again, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. Using powders from from powdered ox hooves. Where would they come up with? I mean, you think, you look at an ox and an eggshell, so uh, the hoof of an ox and eggshells and think, I reckon that'd be quite good for my teeth. Okay, in ancient Rome, public bathhouses were a social hub and cleanliness was a matter of pride. See, the Romans... And from the looks of this, also the Egyptians. You know, it says ancient Egyptians. What other type are there? Ancient Rome. Which obviously, it's not going to be Rome today, is it? You know, ancient Rome. But yeah, they, they were ahead of their times, I think. So ancient Rome, public bathhouses. To a degree. To a degree, I mean, yeah. You, how clean are you if you're sharing water with a hundred other dirty men? And when I say dirty, I don't mean you know, seedy. Although, mm, but just how, how clean would you be? You'd be cleaner than if you hadn't probably got into the water. But there's got to come a time, isn't there, where that water perhaps makes you dirtier than you were before you got into the water. I don't know. It's, and as we know, water alone is not enough, is it? Water alone is not, I mean, it's better than no water. You know, a shower with no soap is better than no shower, probably. I'm guessing, I don't know, but, e, 
So that's that. So number four, Romans used a communal sponge. <laughs> oh, blimey. See, this is in Spartacus. I didn't know if it was true or not, and I still don't. I can't, it's hard to believe. Spartacus, you know Spartacus, um, gladiator, and the Romans, the, the TV show Spartacus was, I was completely addicted to it, seriously. You know, it's one of those shows that I got into in a big way, a bit like Prison Break and... Uh, oh, Lost and Donovan Ruddock Donovan Ruddock and True Blood and wow there's been so many it's ridiculous I've really got into oh, Breaking Bad Boardwalk Empire, The Sopranos, Lily, uh, oh god, what's it called? Um, Game of Thrones, uh, what other ones? There's probably some obvious ones that I've completed. Oh, The Wire. The Wire, blimey. Yeah, I watched all those. I do it, sometimes I get a little bit really caught up in the, like a sitcom. I like to watch a sitcom when it's all finished. And I can watch every single episode. And I did that with Modern Family. Just watched it from one all the way through to the end. And loved it. I might do it with Friends. Because I've seen Friends. I've seen pretty much every episode of Friends when it was on. The first time round. And they've been repeating it on television. It's probably one of the most repeated shows there is in this country constantly being repeated like at the weekends and stuff and I don't again I don't like to see things out of order I, I like it I don't want to see season 3 episode 9 until I've seen season 3 episode 8 before even though I might have already seen 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 it's I don't want to dip because I haven't done the whole every episode back to back to back to front every episode right from the start to the end um, I've done it with Modern Family so I could dip into it without too much problems because I've completed completed the circle um, what's the other one Cheers I completed the circle with that one as well so I watched every single episode I did it with Frasier I mean, years ago, before I moved in here, watched every single episode. And trying to think what else from a comedy perspective. I always get sad, though, at the end. It's like, oh, it's the end now. I want more. I want more. And then it's just finished. It's like, oh. And I just... And I'm quite loyal. I'm quite loyal to a TV show once I start on it. And I will keep going. And even if... As is... Arguably... Quite often the case... Where the last... You know, it pitters out a little bit. It gets a little bit... Samey. And... At the point where all the actors are getting paid huge amounts of money, that seems to be when the show goes downhill a bit. Because possibly just because they've run out of ideas, the writers. 
Yeah, I'll do the first, the first season, and it'll probably be one of the best seasons you'll ever see. Will be the first one. But then maybe you know, and it'll be maybe it'll be quite popular, and we'll get another 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 season, and that'll probably be better than the first season, because there's the enthusiasm, and the characters have been formed, and you know it's it sort of takes a life on of its own on, and everything's really good, and and then maybe the third season gets recommissioned, and that might be a really really good season. It might get better. Than the second, but then by like the sixth or seventh or eighth or ninth, everyone's getting paid huge amounts of money, which they weren't probably at the beginning. It's no longer the characters because, you know, I'm just thinking of Friends for example. They were all stars. By the time it's just like with Cheers, they were all stars, like doing movies and doing their own thing as well as doing Friends, and they were on TV shows, and and it was they were bigger than the show now, and it, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a bit like Roseanne, the Roseanne show. I loved watching that when I was, well, I guess I was a kid, wasn't I? I was a teenager. And she became more famous than the show. But she was the only one that became really famous out of all of them. Like, at the time, I mean. I mean, John Goodman went on to be, he's been in loads of movies. But she was, like, super famous. And you could argue John John Goodman's probably the most famous out of all of them now, in a way. But then Roseanne Barr, she's still really famous, isn't she? Even though she's not on TV anymore. But she kind of became bigger than the than the show. Yeah. But John Goodman went on to have a really successful career as a just been in loads and loads of movies and he's probably been in about 40 movies and then what's her name not the dark haired girl but the blonde daughter I didn't realise at the time she was in Scrubs she was one of the, the doctors in Scrubs the really fast talking one and I, I couldn't believe it I remember my, my friend saying you know who that is I said yeah she's a nurse in Scrubs I know what TV program I'm watching. How stoned do you think I am? He said, no. He said, that's... that's um, I can't remember her name in the show. I know DJ was the kid. And I said, oh, look, if I can remember it. So Dan, Roseanne, DJ. Uh, Becky. Yeah, Becky. Becky was the, the blonde one. And what was the other one? The dark haired one. It wasn't Becky. It was. I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm trying to think. Don't, don't hassle me. I'm trying to think. Becky. No, I keep thinking Diane, but it's not Diane, is it? Diane. That was a. Uh, that was cheers Becky oh, I'll come to me probably before I finish but yeah I couldn't believe Becky was the thing I liked most about Rox, Roseanne it wasn't really Roseanne if I'm honest it wasn't even I liked the dynamics between the two of them and probably the most likeable Ro, Roseanne wasn't particularly likeable she was funny but she wasn't you know I think John Goodman or Dan he was the likeable one out of the two he was the more grounded to me he just seemed a bit more this big strong uh, protective father 
but at the same time sort of trying to live in a house full of females and he was struggling with all that wasn't he especially as they got older but I think the funniest thing of that show was the early years Darlene Darlene Becky and Darlene when them two were arguing that was hilarious in my memory, I don't, I can't even remember one single thing that they said, but I remember it being really funny. That was the dialogue that was the best. And they stole the show, them too, when they were bickering. Very funny. So, yeah, and also, uh, Roseanne's sister, she was really good. They were all good. They were really good. I had, the whole show was, I loved it. Golden Girls is another one. But what's this got to do with <laughs> ancient hygiene techniques? I don't know. I just... Um... Okay, let's go then. Let's go back to the trivia. Uh, okay. Oh, blimey. Yeah, okay. The reason I'm talking about TV shows. In Spartacus, there's a scene where two Roman officers or uh high up ones you know they're not just they're not just soldiers they're high up whatever they are and they developed the red capes and stuff and one of them is talking the other one just goes to this communal toilet which is literally there's all these i don't know like food stores and stuff and then there's toilet there open he sits down. He's still talking to the to the other uh, Roman, and then there, and then he picks this thing up, which is kind of on a stick or something, and it's just these like rags, and he cleans himself with that rag, a communal rag, and that's what it's saying here, Ro. Rome is used a communal sponge, so it's like a sponge for toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> let's move on. But yeah, I didn't know if that was true or not, but it was grim. Number five, Romans also had fulleries. <laughs> Romans all had had fulleries. Do you know what a fullery is? I didn't. It's where urine was collected. For its ammonia content to clean clothes. So they did, they use wee wee to clean clothes. Okay. Cool. And how did they discover that worked? Because. I'll be honest with you. You know. I've been around a long time now. I've had the occasional. Mishap. The occasional misjudgment in aim. And. At no point. I thought to myself a few days later that smells getting better it's almost like the trousers have cleaned themselves no it's a case of they need to wash them oh uh, number six ancient Greeks saw hygiene as linked to well-being and used public baths regularly just like the Romans I mean Greeks and Romans that kind of I think they didn't they have quite a commonality. I mean, I think they visited each other and they were quite good friends. I don't know if that's true, but I imagine how if you went to another country and saw something, come back to your own country and do it there. And yeah, blimey, that was so ahead of this country. Although the Romans did have this country, didn't they, for... What, 400 years or something? Can you believe that? It's like, what? That's a long time. So, number seven. Roman bathing involved not only water, but also oils and a tool called a striggle or strigil. Striggle? To scrape off dirt. Okay. Now that makes sense. Exfiliation, isn't it? Exfiliating someone. So, exfiliating the dirt and the, 
the skin and stuff. So yeah, and that that does make sense. Cool. I mean, isn't it a, a similar kind of thing used in massages sometimes? You know, like a scraping metal thing to, but that's more, I suppose, to to work on the muscles, maybe. So number eight, tooth cleaning powders were also common in ancient Egypt, sometimes using pumice. That might be funny, it might not be funny, I don't know what pumice is. So I'd have to search for that, and I can't be bothered. But pumice, okay, I'm going to search. Uh, 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 okay, all right. Right, so I'll just ask, what is pumice? It's a thick pus. No, I didn't say what pus. Blimey, pumice. The same pus. Pumice. Pumice, did you mean pumice? Yes. Pumice is a type of volcanic rock. <laughs> Puma is a, a pumice is a type of volconic, vol, volconic, volcanic rock formed when lava with high gas and water content cools rapidly, causing it to solidify while trapping gas bubbles inside. This process results in a high porous lightweight stone with a tough rough texture pumice has been used throughout history in various applications such as in ancient hygiene routines for exfoliating skin and in construction as a lightweight aggregate in concrete wow so pumice stone is that what that is that stone that people used to use for dry skin Hard skin, pumice stone. Is that it? Wow. I do wonder though, because, you know, someone's thinking, oh, I need to do something about my teeth. And they're just wandering around and they just see a volcano and think, hmm, I wonder. I don't know. How does it come about? Maybe. Maybe someone that lived near. Lived near a volcano. It was known as Smiley Volcano Man. And no one like. Why do you call him a Smiley Volcano Man? He's just got perfect teeth. He, he spends all his time around a volcano. Like. Huh? Like. It's weird. What does he do? Well, he eats everything. Everything he gets is from the bold volcano. He's got lovely skin. He's got lovely teeth. Uh, he won't tell us what it is, though, but he does something. It's, it's got to be something to do with the volcano. Trying to the heat? I don't know. I don't, the ash? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, maybe, I mean... Could be the rubble, couldn't it? Left over. I don't. Did, did you hear what I said? I said I don't know. Okay. Blimey! In medieval Europe, bathing became associated with. Wow. So is this is interesting? But it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. In medieval Europe, bathing became associated with disease, and hygiene regressed significantly. But if you're sharing a bath, like the Roman baths, and we had Roman, well, I don't know if we still have them, but we have the remnants of them in this country. We've actually got a whole town called Bath, which was a Roman place. So, people sharing, I mean, that's why you have that, you know, in swimming pool, I mean, I'm not being in a public swimming pool for a long time. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm still banned, but you know those things, those that you could walk in. They're like Fiverrukas or something. 
<laughs> why? If you've got a Veruca on your foot, why are you going to a swimming pool? That would be an argument I'd have, but hey, let's not go there. Uh, so, but you walk through and it's like disinfects your feet. It makes sense. Why don't they just have a whole pool of that? You walk through it, it disinfects your whole body before getting into the, the, the main swimming pool. Why just the feet? Anyway, um, yeah, I can't imagine if like, imagine hundreds of people getting in and out of the same bit of water. Look. So, it could, I mean, it could have been, but at the same time, they probably didn't know about changing the water. It might have been they'd only change it if it got to a colour that they thought, hmm, I prefer it when it's clearer. Or maybe, the thing is, some people might be a little bit embarrassed or a little bit shy, and they preferred the water when it was muddy, well, not muddy, but dirty, because then people couldn't see their tinkles. So... I mean, I'm not assuming that only men win, but I'm from my under, from my memory, the it was a very male-dominated environment, the old Romans. So early Chinese cultures used tooth cleaning powders before toothbrushes, often using materials like salt. Um, um, mm. Okay, I need to ask, how long did Rome rule England? That's what I want to know. How long did Rome rule England? It's a couple of hundred years. It's got to be, I thought it was 400 years. Yeah, yeah. Nearly 400 years from from Ad 43 to around Ad 410. The Romans conquered Britain, began in Ad 43 under Emperor Claudius, marking the start of Roman Britain. Roman rule extended over much of modern day England and parts of Wales, while parts of Scotland and Ireland remained largely unconquered. Roman control weakened in the early 5th century as the Roman Empire itself faced increased pressures, including invasions and internal strife. By around Ad 410, Roman forces withdrew from Britain to defend other parts of the empire, effectively ending Roman rule and leaving Britain to local tribes and emerging kingdoms. Okay. I remember reading about that. They like just took off. I mean, but then I've seen some things that say they they left because of the weather. Didn't like the weather. What well, took them four hundred years to realise? You know what I mean? They're like, oh, it wasn't enough food. Not enough food. No, four hundred years. They'd have figured the food situation out. And that's the same thing. We were slaves. Well, I say we. I mean, I might have been a Roman. I'm going to find that out at some point where my DNA results come back. But the Romans came in, they, they took slaves that were in, well, British people, English people, as slaves. They were too scared of Scotland and Wales. Well, not Wales, it's Scotland, especially. I think they, they struggled with Scottish people. They didn't, um, they were too tough. And the Welsh were too tough. English were too tough. Everyone was too tough. That's why the Romans left. That's why they scarpered after 400 years. Uh, we were too tough for them. 400 years. So like how many, bearing in mind, not many people would live to more than like 30 or 40 in them days. So that's like 44. I see it's like 10, 10 or 11 generations of people. I'm at least not nine nine generations knew nothing else they knew nothing else they were born into it and they lived a whole life having the Romans as the boss do you know anything different 
and there came a time when their parents, 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 parents didn't know any different. That's weird, isn't it? I mean, you think, how old is America? So about 300 years old, isn't it? How old, how old is... Is... Blimey. See, you thought I was just being facetious 300 years. It's actually less. 248 years. So it's only 248 years old. America. So you think over 150 years more, we were ruled by Rome. So in effect, we were Italian. And wouldn't you think they would always speak in Italian back then? Because if the Romans, I'm guessing they spoke Italian, they were from Italy. So how come we're not all speaking Italian? It's a good question. Uh, I suppose I could get the answer by learning something new, but I'm not going to. I refuse. So the United States States is considered to be 248 years old. It was officially founded July the 4th, 1776. Really? July the 4th? I thought that was Independence Day. Oh, okay. Well, it's not really, is it? Because we, we owned, you know, British, obviously, we owned America. We, yeah, we, we let you have it back if you lived there. We, we gave it to you. We couldn't be bothered, you know. Didn't like the weather. It was too warm and lovely. <laughs> we missed the cold and the damp and the fog. And the, all the snow and the sleet. Yeah, we missed all that. So that's uh, the smog as well. So that's why, that's why the English came back. We thought, no, don't live somewhere where it's got nice weather. Makes you wonder, though, why the settlers didn't just live in one place. Like a nice place, like where the, the weather's quite nice all year round. I don't know, is that California or... Uh, I'm not sure. Is a certain place where it's pretty much nice most of the time. Because it's not like that everywhere, is it? I guess there was just people that just found it exciting being somewhere new. But we... Signing the Constitution 1978. The thing is... I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Because... If you go back, how long ago is it that we... That we ruled. And how long did we rule? How long... Okay, let's just check this one out. How long did England rule America? So let's have a look. So we ruled parts of what would become the United States. For approximately 169 years... So the first town, the first place was founded was Jamestown, Virginia in 1607 until the Declaration of Independence in 1776. During this time, England gradually established control over 13 colonies along the eastern seaboard of North America through chartered colonies, settlements and territorial acquisitions. The British government directly governed and imposed laws, taxes and trade restrictions leading to increasing tensions. See? We messed it up, man. Why? They always have to kind of mess things up. We ruled the world, baby. <laughs> Just messed it up by being greedy. These restrictions coupled with a lack of colonial representation in British Parliament eventually fueled colonial unrest and demands for independence. So the Revolutionary War, the First Revolutionary War, 
uh, was 1775 to 1783. Okay. Followed ultimately resulting in the establishment of the United States of America and the end of British rule over the colonies. So... It's quite weird, really, because considering how tiny this country is, we did pretty well, didn't we? In a sense of ruling countries so much bigger. I mean, if it had been a big country, if we'd have been like the size of China, for example, then... America would still be Chinese or, you know, British or whatever. But we've got, we, you know, we've got tiny, it's a tiny little bit of land that we're on, which explains why we kept traveling to get more land because this wasn't enough here. We needed, we needed holiday homes. <laughs> we needed places to, to, you know, to have a break. So America used to be our holiday home. Australia, India, there's lots of, we had lots of holiday homes, and then, I don't know, I'm just joking. Uh, okay, early China, okay, what's the next? Babylonians made one of the earliest soaps around 2800 BCE from animal fats and wood ash. Babylonians. 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 Um, oh. What do you mean you're not British? What do you mean you're not? You didn't come from England. Well, why do you speak English then? Let's see. You know something I never understood. Okay, is you have with boxing person that introduces the fighters for some reason and I've never understood this and it doesn't just happen in this country um, it doesn't just happen in America it happens in other countries as well but definitely in America but because you know a lot, a lot I see a lot of fights from America and it happens in this country also so the ring announcer will say, and now, f uh, uh, for example, from the United States, from New Orleans, it's Razor Thumper Harris and Tom, whatever. And then there'll be a Mexican. Or someone from South America. And they always put an accent on when they say their name. They always like roll their tongue and they put an accent. Jesus Venice Gonzalez. And they put like an, uh, um, a Spanishy accent. And you might think, well, that's respectful. Yeah, fair enough. I'll go with that. Cool. I can't roll my tongue, so I wouldn't know how to. Here's me rolling my tongue. <laughs> See, it's not very good. But they don't do it with other places. They don't do it with German. They don't like say, and now the challenger from Germany. I don't care. Okay, that, that's not a good German accent, but. um, Or they don't. You don't go to America and say, and now. The challenger from Scotland is Corner Craig. They don't, you know, they don't do that. They don't, they don't put an accent on for a Scottish person. They don't like when um, Calzaghi, he was a world champion. And now the d defending champion, Calzaghi. That's, that wasn't a good Welsh accent, but just, you know, as, you, you, do you see what I mean? Or if it's a French, a French uh, might actually sometimes you do, but generally, if it's a French person, it's to say, um, 
And now the the challenger from France, Paris, France. Jean Vigabalula. They, they don't. Jean Hihu. It's not a very good accent, but I'm just trying to get the point across. They don't. They just do it in an American accent. But when it comes to South American, you know, it's the same. If it, they're from Canada, they don't say, and now from Canada, Montreal. Actually, let's say, let's say not Montreal, Toronto. Is Toronto Canada? It is, isn't it? Um, Bobby the Gun. A. Eh? You know, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, I don't get why they, and they never do an English accent either. So in America, they're like this, and you got gun, you know, the, the, the challenger, even if it's an English fighter, the, t- the challenger from Venezuela, Vinoral Zoba Cantolino, and from England, they don't go, Tyson Fury. No, it's Tyson Fury. No, just Anthony Just No, it's Anthony. Anthony, no. Anthony. Anthony, no. Anthony. Well, it's got an H, man. Oh, no, it's got an H. House has got an H, but it's house, isn't it? We all know that. It's horse, not horse. <laughs> I've got to go down tan uh, I've got to go home it's home not home so I'm going to back off my soapbox Babylonians go so in ancient Mesopotamia clay tablets have recipes detailing soap making with fats and oils mixed with ashes Lovely. Ancient Indian text from 2800 BCE describe using ashes and water to maintain cleansiness. Wow. I mean, mm, yeah, I don't want to be controversial, but... Mm, I mean, I guess... It's the whole thing, is if it stops your hand from stinking, then there's that theory that your hand must be clean. But technically, you go to the toilet, or you could, you know, I mean, if you could have a really smelly, let's say you've got a really smelly hand, and you dipped it into a bowl of tomato soup, your hand's now going to smell of tomato soup. But should you be licking your fingers? Probably not. You know, that's, that's just the, the theory. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the Romans innovated plumbing, creating aqueducts to bring fresh water to cities for bathing and drinking. So, yeah, I guess there was that as well. Ancient Romans had around 144 public latrines, often placed near bathhouses for easy water access. Oh, cool. Romans taxed urine collected from public urinals as it was used for cleaning and laundering. What? Chinese Chinese civilizations utilized herbal medicine in hygiene routines using ingredients like mint for fresh breath. Okay. I mean, that's kind of stuck, isn't it, really? Uh, problem with um, I'd leave a bit of a weird I'd leave a taste uh, in ancient Japan bathing was considered a ritual of purification and part of religious practice Egyptians believed cleanliness influenced spiritual health and often used perfumed oils as antiseptics now, 
we're talking about all these like other countries but there was a time when people thought as i said earlier what they put they put perfume and i'm thinking more of this country they'd by putting perfume on themselves and covering up the smell meant that they were clean which of course is not true it's not it's not it's not the case is it but i do have one story this is apparently this is really true and i'll i will check this um scottish doctor scottish surgeon surgeon soap so this is a very famous story you might not be aware of it but uh joseph lister blimey i wonder if that's where listerine comes from joseph lister was a scottish surgeon is celebrated for pioneering antiseptic surgery in the 19th century he introduced the use of the use of carbolic acid phenyl to sterilize wounds and surgical tools significantly significantly reducing infections and etc um louise pasteur's journal suggests that my okay right so there was someone else so it's another scottish surgeon okay i have a a vague memory of this searching let's have a look scottish surgeon joseph lister all right so while he was alive i don't think they took they didn't do it so joseph lister um he did revolution things but it was he was affected by or influenced by louis pasteur louis pasteur germ theory lister proposed that infections were caused by airborne particles and micro blah 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 he applied carbic carbolic acid phenyl as a disinfectant in whatever so his work fundamentally altered medical practices they were initially met with skepticism as some surgeons held on to traditional beliefs that infections were influenced by factors like hospitalism the idea that hospital conditions themselves were inherently harmful well that has actually been proved to be true sometimes isn't it but however lister's success in reducing surgical mortality eventually gained acceptance leading to widespread uh da, 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 was he imprisoned unless that's a different person okay so which scottish surgeon on a maternity ward wanted to introduce hand washing and was subsequently put into an asylum see that's my i got this memory now i'm going to have to figure out who that is it's interesting Ooh. Oh, oh, it wasn't Scottish. Oh, but I don't know why did I think it was a Scottish. I'm probably getting muddled up because I must have read about the Scottish surgeon who introduced what we already talked about. This is a different one. This was a Hungarian obstetrician. He pioneered hand washing in the 1840s on the maternity wards at the Vienna General Hospital. So, basically, the surgeons and the doctors weren't washing their hands. 
the male ones. But when he went to the female ward, uh, like uh, we, he, I'm gonna. It's probably this isn't necessarily exactly true, but generally, the females were washing their hands and the men weren't as often, which meant the success rate overall was much bigger for the females, the female ward. Again, that might be a completely different story, but generally. Why he, he said they got to wash their hands, but it was controversial. <laughs> it was very controversial. How dare you say I got to wash my hands? They went directly from autopsies to delivering babies without hand washing. So yeah, that's a bit grim. Um, so he, he implemented mandatory hand disinfecting upon uh, using chlorinated lime solution, which drastically reduced what was happening um however his ideas were controversial as they challenged the prevailing belief in miasma theory which is bad air causing stuff and suggested that the doctors themselves could be causing infections okay unfortunately the medical community largely rejected semmelweis's findings i mean semmelweis's findings leading to professional isolation and severe mental distress in 1865 he was committed to an asylum under dubious circumstances and so his advocacy for hand hygiene was later validated validated with the rise of germ theory which was largely popularized by Louis Pasteur and furthered by Joseph Lister in antiseptic practices. See, it's gone full circle. Isn't that amazing? That they didn't know. Anyway, that's the end of this recording. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Now, remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. <laughs> Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. 
every morning, every evening. There was this recording from going back to about 1999. It was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day.
and something that I do which you may not realise by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say so if I said to you focus on your feet notice your feet relaxing I will be focusing on my feet I will be noticing my feet relaxing If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand, perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands. I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. If it's snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I 
I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing, improving, when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. In 
enjoying. That feeling of peace. Serenity. With a joyful heart. seems to just drip by so very slowly So deeply peaceful. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your 
brain. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper Soon. The feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. deeply the 
There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. Very slow. Your stomach. in your stomach your back Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed.
threading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. shins and your calf muscles, Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice the forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace.
Total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed 
even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort, and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice really does feel nice 
to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck the 
front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose and calm. The sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan Gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, 
as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message your arms and you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and 
Gentle. Focusing now on your hands, sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar tips i 
muscles on your thighs. Your knees. So relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
day. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now. Ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, ten, nine, Seven, six, Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure that I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something? Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors, otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. head even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us, supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff is inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course, it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective might sound a bit a bit silly to start with 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles and the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. Yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet also go and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly be one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five, four, three. One and as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. Notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you maintain 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more in with number seven.
imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, there's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels. Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands fingers, becoming even more relaxing with each 
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Just 
gym and you're thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we do now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness. Which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful, a place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort, a place where you can be you, where you can accept yourself who you are, a place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever, a place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. Spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past 
for some reason no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something's changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't this doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep with every number you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Nine, 
empty. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, 
it's kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. started the focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort and relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start to drift, That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also Okay.
is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me give permission to your body and your mind in fact you give the command to your body and your mind to relax deeper and to drift off to sleep I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and then you come back again, and you hear me talking and and focusing on a different part of your body. yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting and you're alert again to my voice focusing on a different part of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting Basically, you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues into sleep. the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do fall asleep Feel that key energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing you so 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if they just mix together. Now focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. on your elbows, focusing in on both of your elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles,
go letting go letting go letting go letting to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently. 
just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now I'll put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when you massage...
massaged. Sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. Just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. Just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. You've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides, and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and make it feel really nice sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders. And now you move down your arms. You do one arm at a time. Starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up. Just hold it to the side of you. And where it still be attached. And I'll just massage the tops of your arms. down to your forearms, into your wrists, gently massaging that part, the softer part which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both 
both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes. Even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. And you can feel nice, and you can feel safe. As I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm, exactly the same, massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently, massaging the palm of your left hand, and you can feel so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we already be at been, that area at the top, in between your shoulders, and then your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connect 
relaxed your front to your back. Just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle and yet firm as you choose. Eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can do that a few times, sometimes people choose knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine and almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated and now I'm going to move to one side to your right side and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful, starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. Move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and 
gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massive massage in that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest so it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. as gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands, Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. 
shoulders and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but Firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel. You can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides. Massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down. And this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. Perhaps, if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles. Firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle and to your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet, the bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Turn over in your mind, if you're laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your 
shoulders. Just to get back in touch with that area. As you move up. fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently, starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. Just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. chin, and just moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest. collarbone is, either side of the collarbone, and just massaging the whole of the chest, moving the chest around, Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next, moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest, and then moving down again. And then allowing my hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach starting in the middle of your chest and then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time moving down to just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. So 
just stroking my hands down the sides of your body. Or just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. moving to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back, I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side, gently massaging one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. I'm going to move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. And as I now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them, and I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet. in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let Enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings 
to come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big Low, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need to sleep, you'll also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed. listening to me after a while and even though there may be background 
sounds where you are. You be aware of those sounds. Just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds. Wallace the pigeon, it likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, there'll be traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important. Whatsoever. The more candles you blow out, the less important anything is. The more candles you blow out, the further you seem. say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. The first candle, which is one hundred. Blow that candle out. You'll find immediately a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Start 
Monitor. 52.
28.
go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's almost like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, good, I can now relax. It's that feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past. Where you get home and you just sit down on a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and oh, oh feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least. And if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. And just by sitting down like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset where your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything. Allow all the stress of your body to evaporate. And any 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, and deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not may not actually be aware of what we need what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor, start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser looser, even the breathing seems easier and more natural and effortless, as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Comfort 
some relaxation. And then just breathe in out any excess remaining tension and stress from every part of your body. you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things uh, have come to a standstill, and maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed, really is a great healing experience for you, and has so many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind. Even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have feels so. starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice to relax, he sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeper. because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, calm 
concentrated healing calming relaxing every part of your brain feeling so ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. and your mind, feeling so peaceful and calm, so very, very peaceful in every part of your body.
do a body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Opening and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. And a very, very slow movement. Focusing now feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. But only very Gently and very slowly, noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows, which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel. Focusing on your thighs. I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel. to the back of your leg, 
just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down, as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. anything. It has to be very, very gentle. Just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are, to your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this 
this planet. Just noticing the physical sensations of the lower abdomen. And as we move your attention Seeing your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue. it gently against the side of your mouth and then to the right gently to the side of your mouth perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth Always very slowly and very, very gentle, so that you can be aware of how you feel. to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly just so that you can the sensations that you are currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again Observe your lower back, and that back part is 
just above your hips, where your coccyx are. So really does include the sides of the body as those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side, just enough physical sensations of your lower back, as we now move to your attention. just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide and no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and closing your now your chest area and you don't need to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe
muscles and those bones in your midsection. Noticing how the hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching, but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very 
small movements which make up the larger movements, which is always the case. So when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings just thinking them thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings not being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings. All those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling. Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm and your right arm? Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to it may not feel like anything other than just 
a feeling that it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder, and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit. Maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. And of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. And sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, they just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same. Whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there. Muscles that stretch out to your back. As well as breast tissue that stretches 
and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being. With whatever feeling there is. In your chest. I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. feels it feels okay doesn't feel a little bit of pain in my right chest a little bit not pain but a little discomfort maybe stiffness possibly I don't know Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. It feels quite nice actually. good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, a, an issue with a per, part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing deeply. It's important. Be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful.
peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation, at the very least for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down. As your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. For a relaxation. To feel your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away drifting it's almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, like a movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. to relax drifting 
focusing on the evening. that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe started to almost move into some kind of a dream state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift Naturally into that space of comfort and safety. As you feel body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just sounds they just don't seem to matter anymore there's that sense of peace spreads through your mind gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety and stress there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense that is filling your body and your mind and 
as you focus on your mind and you count down from 10 down to 1 and with each number you hear your mind will be calm seem like Just slightly and from ten down to nine, just a slight movement from nine down to eight, just another small change in how you feel. to seven, that feeling is, is a gap, almost like a gap, it starts to get a little wider, the gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind, compared to the feelings you have that are glowing feelings of comfort and security and confidence and that gap becomes wider eight down to seven seven down to six and when you get to five your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation, almost like there's a magnet outside of your head, sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them out through your skull. start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness but space a place full of fresh air a place where you can stretch it's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. So you move down to two, and when you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel, almost a perfect feeling, maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. And you can stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind, 
just by counting from 10 down to 1. And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count slowly from ten down to one. And we experience these feelings in your mind. And when you feel that system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own each time you count from 10 down to 1 the feelings of comfort calmness and Deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals that spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind, so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. So we're going to do it now going to count from 10 down to 1 and I'd like you to repeat the number after me so when I say 10 you can just repeat to yourself 10 so just notice be aware say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine, again, noticing the increase in comfort and calmness in your The same when I say eight, when I say seven, six, when I say five, four, when 
yourself to breathe. say one, you just repeat that number, and of course when you do this on your own, without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10, you're going to go to 1, faster than I do, then go ahead and do that, or if you feel when you do it yourself, then you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers. take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. to one, that will be the end of this recording, unless of course you're listening with music, and the music will continue.
20. 19. 18. 17. 16. Now open your eyes, noticing how you physically feel, having counted down from 20 to 1, allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly is, I suppose, quite an understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body and through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress anxiety that you may have, leaving through your stomach, just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather, so surrounding your belly button and whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach is often very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20. Nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen.
this again if you choose, or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. Notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focusing on your upper body, your back, your chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording, because you like to let go completely of everything, and drift off into a nice choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well, so your forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically, almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or like <laughs> Zorro or something, you know the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. Focusing on that area, because that's the area that you're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain and from your mind, and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, in your forehead, and in your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area in your mind and your brain. And that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. And now 20 19 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 
sensation, not just in your head and neck and mind, but also the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel. Look how easily the ease to just let go. on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body, your mind, your head, to just be sucked sucked out into the clouds. Imagine a big cloud above your head, almost like a whirlpool. It's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head and just take it away. For good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head and stress and all your mailing issues, maybe worries or concerns that were of no use to you now, they'll all be sucked out of the top of your head, taken away as I count down again from 20 down to 1. physically and mentally feel right now. How peaceful your mind feels. Feel 
just so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think. Concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now. Because this is your time to let go. This is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed, peaceful in your serenity that comes with letting go completely, that peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And if you can keep this sense of as long as you choose. If you choose to drift on your counter, deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose to be completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax, relax, you know, um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say it to yourself it means more it's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So for example, we'll test it out. You can do a little test, do little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to 
relax. So I'm going to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying. You know, like they've got little ears. That's always a little weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you you might say relax or relax. But you know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax. I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. Sort of, I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there, but I wasn't, but I wasn't focusing on it at all. So I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings. Still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually. My hands have got a certain kind of energy, like not buzzing, but a kind of feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension is being released. Maybe that's causing that. Next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, um, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself, but I think it's quite a, a 
a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax. In your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally. But you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck. As if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now and just say, relax to the back of your neck. And I'll do the same. and you know you've had a similar thing is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck other parts started to I don't know show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back whether that was because my my back of my neck was saying yeah I'm pretty much okay it's the other parts that need attention but my low my my back of my neck is still relaxing but I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going any wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back if you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back and your spine and you ignore it to near the shoulder blades but they're there yeah that's the parts that are really same now. Relax your upper back. If something strange happens and and this often happens I've been doing this for what 16 years or something and I often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that there can be a feeling so when I was focusing on the back of my neck my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention as soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. 
it's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, it just needs attention. something that often happens in this type of situation is when we start to relax a couple of parts of our body as we're done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids, our mouth, back of the neck, top of the back. The rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing. Other parts of your body start to just become looser. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche little ball starts rolling and before you know it the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And as we focus on our face, focus on your muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say your entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. Focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. And you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just feel you do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe you can see them in your mind's eye. Just tell your shoulders to relax. as they relax. But I do notice with my especially with my back is the connection between the different parts. Your back, your shoulders, your neck. such a, a large part of your body, it's almost hard to separate them from each other. And my lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds and the idea 
beginning of this recording for you to be able to just say to yourself, Focusing on any particular part of your body because when you know that some of your hands can relax, let your hands relax, you tell your eyelids and your eyes, the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows. Tell your upper back and relax. And it relaxes. You tell your shoulders. Tells your hands to relax, they relax, and let your tongue to relax. And you tell your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, the eyebrows, to relax. in the back of your neck and you told it to relax and you relax and let your tongue to relax and you told your to relax and as with your shoulders you tell your shoulders to relax and your shoulders relax It's not just that, it's that the rest of your body is also relaxing, and that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes, the relaxation has spread to your forehead, and now your face into your skin to your jaw. And you talk down to the sides of your neck. 
داده ای و نفسی که به من تمام است سلام در پیست
Maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. And is it too fast for me to notice the calming of the body? Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, Mike. You're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go floppy just because you're counting down? Try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on the legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel. every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down it's just being there it's not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes 
Yes, it is that gap of calmness, of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. or discomfort physically or emotionally and moves them away. Allows for you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap in widening the gap and as it widens it's almost like the the stress or the tension falls into the gap you that distance, that space, nine, ten, nine, Seven, six, Can you start with focusing on the thighs? Because 
is that the most exciting thing to do is I'm sure like most of our bodies would never want to hang around with that guy just focusing on the whole of your thigh the tops of your thumbs the sides of your thighs the bottoms of your thighs the outer thighs and the inner thighs basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip and goes down to your knee joint now this is a big area strongest muscles in our body are in our thighs. And I don't think we perhaps pay give enough attention to our thighs. important our thighs are to our lives. How much how much of a difference sounds really weird but I think it really is our body parts especially our thighs that we see we are seen a bit of love shown a bit of just mentally how far to you Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound just really maybe you think, oh no, surely I could do it in the garden or cover the tree or something. to set an apple down in front of a tree it's really hard to uproot it unless I would do it straight up in front of a tree but then I can't see a tree that I can uproot if you move down to your knees they are such an important part of our lives and I think we don't necessarily speak to ourselves here we don't necessarily appreciate all that we may do for our our toes if we have a problem with them or how we feel with them or how our back shape or our anatomy for some reason it's when of being able to use our legs without any kind of physical discomfort is I think I think it's it's probably not appreciated until it's something that we all end up neglecting. And if you focus on that now Regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of how they're different, how you want to feel them, and for all that they do for you. And if we still give that attention to our thighs, I think you'll notice how your thighs feel. 
strange in a way in the sense that you know logically our wrists are in from the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't answer any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up it's that other thing there's so much thinner than the rest of our arms From a physics perspective, at a logical level, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight should ultimately be resting on your ankles and the ankles of your feet. Supports our body and lifestyle. Helps us be balanced. Helps us lose weight. But we know more about our arms than that. And it's a pride muscle. Couldn't see the point in a calf muscle. Couldn't see the feel of a calf. But I could now. If I walk around in foot shoes, I know that my calf muscle has got some weight. And it looks like I'm the strong person with the hard arms. And the other one's the weak arm. focus on the feet, I'm just going to focus on the legs, and where the arms are in the right weight on the feet, and probably how to bring them in anyway, so nobody else is focusing on the feet either. So I'm focusing on the arms and the legs, so far more so as your thigh Different stuff in the body. Feels good in the muscles. 